Hello, Endless Honeymoon Podcast listeners. It's me, Moshe Kasher. And his wife. Yeah, that's <laughs> Natasha Legero. And our guests today, we're very excited, very, very excited. A screenwriter, actor, director. Yes, yes. It's Lauren Miller Rogan and her lovely bride, Seth Rogen. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for coming, you guys. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having so us. So excited to be here. Very so we wonderful. usually ask people about their core issues, but you guys seem like you have like a really chill relationship. We do. We do. <laughs> but there, so, there must be something that is a core problem you have. We can think. tell you what we're having today while you guys what's think about it. What's your core Oh, yeah, what's yours? Right now we're in the midst of, well, as you know, we're in the midst of a global pandemic. Okay. <laughs> which, we didn't even like... We didn't shake hands. We, yeah. no, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, we did. We did the. Uh, I it, took four hundred hands today. Did you really? You sh- you're shaking hands right now. I guess I. Oh, I, I'm it not. Just happened. Oh, I mean, you no, heard I'm not. the verbal what? salutations memo. El, the, the CDC. Just say hi. No, the city of Los Angeles has officially recommended that you do verbal salutations. <laughs> hi. <laughs> <laughs> salutations. I also, salutations. <laughs> verbal. Just, just keep it verbal. I do you use the words verbal, verbal, okay, salutations. Yeah. verbal salutations? Hello, verbal salutations. Hello. A hearty verbal salutations. Salutations. You. <laughs> Not it's get, getting gets very formal when you exactly. have a horrifying. Yeah. Well, actually, have you guys seen the footage? There's a um, the the Wu Wu Shun handshake. Yeah, where you tap feet. You tap feet. Oh, I like that. Okay. Which is really a kid and play move. It kind of is. Isn't yeah. that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Finally, they're yeah, back right. in the zeitgeist. They're back. Kid and play is like they had that shit all a, locked down uh, early. It's kind of yeah. intimate though to tap someone's shoe. I don't know. You think that's more yeah. intimate? It does make me realize how much we touch each other all the time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, our faces. And our faces. For I touch sure. my face non I, I can't stop. I can't. I, now it's that I'm all I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> now you want to do it more. <laughs> I read this <laughs> thing where Jacqueline Kennedy said that she was like at something and she knew someone was a princess because she never touched her face once. Whoa. Oh. So I always thought that in my head, like it's like it's like high status. How like, regal. You never touch your face. It is yeah. true. If you mm-hmm. if you consciously stop touching your face, you start to kind of become a little more snobby. <laughs> right. like, right. like, oh, You're no. right. inherently better than other people. Yeah. What were you saying? That like <laughs> non-princesses are always like wiping their nose with their fingers. They're sniveling and, <laughs> and just That's mopping me. up their heads. Their stew. <laughs> you know, they, they put their paw into the stew. Yeah. And, you know, things like That's that. me too. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Wiping themselves off. Uh, so the fight we were having today is we have a gig on on Friday in North Dakota and we're flying and because it's in North Dakota mm. uh, there are no direct flights to Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, so I'm not trying to go to four airports yeah. Yeah. in 24 hours during an escalating outbreak that <laughs> yeah. has breaking news every hour. Yeah. Right. I got stuck in North Dakota away from my child. I don't think I'd ever forgive you. You don't even have to have the qualifier of the child. I just feel like we could be yeah. young and single and swinging. And like, <laughs> still, you don't want to be there. Yeah. That's you know, a bummer. The yeah. funniest part. This was the funniest part. How did part. that play into a core issue? Oh, well, it, it's essentially her worry yes. versus uh-huh. my brazenness. Oh, and saying. you're not you're not worried. It's not that I'm not worried. It's just maybe it's just that I like I like money and I'm kind of like willing to risk <laughs> sure. my life and th- that my child grows up an orphan. In it's order a to- real yeah. Jewish conundrum, this <laughs> yeah. virus. <laughs> it's like our desire for money versus our fear of disease. <laughs> this was the funniest part of the whole thing today was that – Natasha, can I, I, oh, we'll cut it out if you don't like this. <laughs> but she called her agents today and was like, I don't know if, is this a good idea? Is this not a good idea? And her agents were like, absolutely. It's, it's a, this no, is- they were like, it's totally fine. It's just business as usual. And this is it's CAA. But then the next, like our CAA said that you can't go there for a meeting anymore. What? <laughs> right. So CAA. It's on lockdown. The agency Stay was like, out. you go, go, absolutely. Yes. Have no fear. And then they were like, but actually the agents aren't so going to be right. touching anybody anymore. That is crazy. Just send your money electronically. We don't want to hand it yeah, off exactly. to you directly. <laughs> Will they shake 10% fear. of your hand? Yeah. What? <laughs> That's just your pinky. One right? finger. Yeah. But our core issue, especially with child rearing, is that I, he thinks that I'm very afraid and scared uh. and he is... More of she like thinks a I'm very reckless. hot dog yeah. right. <laughs> trying to like put the baby right close to the fire in a flammable packet. Right. Way. You know right. what I mean? Right. So, I, will right. Pa- I will actually pack her up in sort of more flammable stuff than normal. Right. Yeah. Just to get her. You want to see. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. want to test really how, how accurate that is. And then our other core issue is that I like to spend money and he's very frugal. Mm. So that's an issue as well because. Again, vaguely anti Semitic. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of yeah. undercurrents. <laughs> We're both Jewish. So that, that 
that, that instantly eliminates a lot of yeah. these problems. You guys problems. don't have to fight at all. Exactly. Uh, let's both say, and let's not travel. Yeah. 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 Four <laughs> generations ago, we're cousins, yeah. so we have a lot in common. <laughs> By the way, that, that, that's... That is the fear. It's oh, a, yes, all Jews. It's a funny riff, but my family <laughs> oh, is true. so Hasidic yeah. that... In the community I grew up in, there were like there was evidence. Oh, oh yeah, there was like straight up like, oh, there are too many people that are too disabled <laughs> in this community. This is this doesn't feel right. It's a well, real then thing. they were deaf too. They, my whole family's deaf, and that's legit. That's why. Yeah, I, it yeah. is why. Yeah, you know, my mom converted, and I always think of my mom as the great um, mud blood filtration. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you guys meet? Uh, here it, in L.A. We yeah, met, we met here. Our our friends uh, were dating and introduced us. Uh huh. I was yeah. It, we've been. To, it was like it was almost fifteen, 15 years, in years, May, years ago. It'll be 15 in May. Years. Yeah. Wow, yeah. That's long. That's yeah. It's nice. a long time. It was. Yeah. yeah. I was. Uh, yeah. And I, when did you get married? Not till much many later years than after that. that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a core issue for a while. That was a core issue, and it's no longer, thank God, due to my forgiving <laughs> uh, wife's nature. You had to a, talk him into the marriage part. Well, no, the issue was really that I, I didn't, and it ate at me because I didn't bring it up because I didn't want to be that sort of mm. naggy person, even though we had a great relationship and had lived together for five years, and it was like, and we were like 30, and it was like, what, what? Isn't that fun? In the patriarchy something, you were five years into a relationship and were still trying to be the cool chick that didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to be cool. I just. <laughs> I literally would like be like, all right, I brought it up. And I'm going to wait six months before I bring it up again. Uh. But the thing is, like, what men don't understand, it's like when you say, oh, oh, that, that guy's got a girlfriend. It's different than, like, that guy's got a wife. You know? Right. And, like, Moshe was going on the road because we had the same situation. I had to kind of, like, explain it to him. Right. You know? Like, I just, that's just what how I see myself. And if you want to have a child, which he did, I'm like, I don't really want to do that if we're not married. It just... I don't know. I just, I'm not even old fashioned. I was just like, it was just something in my head that I wanted. I know. It's, yeah. it just, it, it is this just sort of like thing of just like, it's like sort of saying that it's like you and me versus the rest. 100%. And like, and that just. We're a team. We're. Yeah. And whether it's marriage or just sort of like saying that officially or whatever, I just feel like that's. In front of your friends, which exactly. is part of it. Yeah. And like, yeah, like literally, like. We said in our in our wedding thing, we were like, "Could you recite our... your vows for us?" Yeah, I was exactly. just wondering. Yeah. <laughs> but we said, and I want to say it was like in like our program. It was like, "This is our day to tell everyone we like each other more than we like the rest of you," yeah. <laughs> or something, something like that. There is something really true about that. Like when you, oh, I don't even know if it's marriage or if it's just be, if it's this love thing where you create a little subunit. Like yeah. you, you, you break off, you know, you break off of the family tree into your own branch and there's something kind of yes. nice about that. Yeah. Like, for sure. this is our little stock over here and yes. come what may, <laughs> coronavirus or not, we have <laughs> We'll this. have it together and we'll get through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, it was stupid. I regret it. I should have proposed earlier and been married earlier. I have no, yeah, it was just dumb. And, what's, and I'm not like afraid of commitment. And that's what's also silly. It's like, no, we moved uh, in yeah. together 18 months in. Like we literally. Yeah, we've lived together for like 14 years. Yeah. And I have like a writing partner that I've been with him since I was 12 years old. And what's, also. What's like, weird is that you proposed to him. Almost yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was also. They've been married for 20 yeah, years. I know. Well, that was also this thing where it was like, my parents are together. And it was just like, oh, I have like many examples of beautiful, long-lasting relationships. It was like a, it was an arbitrary and stupid, like last, like it's bastion youth. of rebellion. Right. I think in yeah. some way I was trying to hold on to this thing that I that I now look back on, and it was it was so dumb because I'm still very immature. But there is yeah. some. Well, it is maturity, but in in a positive and a negative, like that yeah. it, that does feel like you're cutting the last tether to being young. Yeah, you're like yeah. I'm not young. I'm like a married yeah. person. And now right. we realize having kids is yes. actually that. Yeah, it's actually that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Because we're, yeah, exactly. we're, we're still wait a minute. Yeah. Fuck you. We're still young and hip. And now we realize. Exactly. What we realize in the last five years is we're actually very young and with it. And yeah. All the parents in our life are kind of like exactly. old funny yes. guys. <laughs> we see it all. <laughs> no, you're not wrong about that. <laughs> we're, we're, I think we're, we're, we do pretty good. Yeah, I, I still surf. You know, you which she, is very cool. I, it's and, the and coolest I do and youngest. Yeah. Yeah. No, come on. No, but like we I, in in our when we decided to have kids, it was like spoken out loud that like I I or maybe by me it was this was another core issue. I didn't want to become the person that you're referencing. I yeah. didn't want to become right. the person that can like I remember my brother saying he had this friend who was he invited over for dinner and they were like, Oh we can't come over for dinner because that's 
little funky's nap time. And I'm just like, I can't. I'm not going to be doing that. Like, a great right. name, B. I get it. Though. Yeah. And how is Funky doing? <laughs> little Funky's grown up. Little, little Funky's big Funky. Now Funky's he's been now he's big Funkhauser. <laughs> <laughs> he's a nuclear scientist. Yeah, exactly. He's doing great, actually. There's nothing wrong with the guy, Mr. Funkhauser. Uh, well, I don't know. You guys, should we? Um, just... Unless there's anything else you want to. I don't know. Uh, should we jump in, or what should we do here? Should we should we take a call? Or do you you guys... never listen to me, you fuck. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, I have <laughs> actually. A funny time to uncover some. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really you have any... always belittle me. We don't have any core issues, <laughs> really, except for Lauren's racism. <laughs> exactly, and the fact that she oh never takes me fucking seriously, no matter what. Stop I'm hitting doing. me! <laughs> Once I did use the podcast to tell Moshe. You know, like I kind of took him off guard because and because we didn't have a fight, and I let him know about his phone use and how it was bothering. Me. Oh, oh so if you have anything, you need to get off here to yeah. either of you. So we don't, we don't hold back the dislike fear. of each other's yeah, phone no, use. Yeah, no, we're constantly so we're, criticizing yeah. each other's phone use while on our. Yes. Phone. Oh, well, we, yeah. we had one the other yeah. day. I've talked about it on the podcast last week, but I'll just bring it up again because <coughs> it was so wonderful. Uh, Natasha looked up from for her phone to chastise me about my phone use. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was really... Have you come up with any solutions? We try not to do it when we're like, uh, no, in bed. No, we, we were like, well, let's we not look roll. at our phones in bed. <laughs> we, but then that didn't Which really we did for like a, a week. And yeah. then, no. So what's the rule? There's no rule. No, the rule was no phones in bed. You guys can't do rules. You're young yeah. and cool. Yeah. You guys <laughs> are edgy. No when you have kids, it, it if you have work. kids, then you start to yeah. do like phone rules. But when you're like wild punk rockers like yes, the two of you. Exactly. When we are no wild rules. crazy yeah. going to bed at 1030, we <laughs> yeah, make exactly. sure those phones do not come into the bedroom. <laughs> Don't you think no phones at f- mealtime is good though? Oh, yeah. No, I definitely, if which Seth will do sometimes at dinner, sometimes. will pull out a phone and I will very actively suggest that that phone get put away immediately. Yeah. Well, Moshe it, will do this thing when we go out to lunch sometimes and he'll put his phone next to him and he'll just be watching it while he's eating. Oh, like come that. on. Why are we talking about <laughs> this? <laughs> but that's just... What's, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on here? making things up. Wait. Have you guys heard... This doesn't help in a romantic relationship, but this is good for friends. Have you heard about the, the, the thing where you go out to eat and everybody stacks their phone? Oh. In the middle of the table, and the first person who grabs their phone pays Has for to the pay. meal. Oh, wow. it's funny. We went to a fancy restaurant in New York the other day, not to brag, and the fancy restaurant did a thing where there was like a box on the table, and they were like, "There's a thing we do where you can all put your phones in this box throughout the meal, and we'll take it away." And we were all like, "No, we're good. We're just going to fuck." <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> yeah, like, well, we'd rather just look at our phones throughout the meal. That's Thank so funny. You. you look at each yeah. other. We were You're like, like, "Are you like, worth? No. Yeah, is this going to be a night of good. stimulating yeah, like think a three-hour meal, nah. fancy restaurant? We're going to want to see what's happening." Out there. The improv, <laughs> the Hollywood improv has started doing a thing that a lot of comedy clubs are doing, but uh, which is the little phone bags where you right. when, when you enter. Oh, they you, take your phone now. They take your phone now, which is awesome. Yonder, yeah. yonder, 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 the yonder bag. Yonder. It's How awesome. Do you know that we that, used them once. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was. Pre, it's pretty. It's pretty great. But I did a show the other day. And it was woefully underattended. It was like, you know, 30 people in a 200 seat. Uh, um, people uh, want their phone. And I was just, I felt bad. I was like, you yeah. guys deserve your phone. This yeah. show is at Warren. <laughs> yeah. You're not texting. I tape yeah. it. <laughs> uh, uh, here, speaking of phones, here's something I, I, I meant to bring this up uh, before, but the this is a true sign of our times. This this really made me laugh. Natasha texted me this. This, this is exactly what is happening in our lives right now. This was the series of texts from Natasha the other day. Can you tell that I'm vamping just a little bit <laughs> to get you're, there? You're scrolling. Yeah, yeah, I'm scrolling. I'm getting there. I'm get, You guys are going to, it's worth it. I almost promise it probably isn't worth it. It could be not worth it. It's totally possible. Hold on. Here we go. Yes, we're coming. There. Okay, here we go. She goes, uh, she's talking about her daughter. She's like, she just went down for a nap. I'm at Brendan's house. I'm going to walk back. What are you doing? She, then she sends me a picture of our daughter. And then the next text is, we should get a pump action shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little good. bit of good, yeah. a little bit of bad, a it's little bit of panic. That's what's out there. Well, I saw one and I was like, oh. <laughs> you saw one? No, I mean, I like was looking online. At guns. At, at gun, and I know how hard it is to shoot them. So I was, by accident. The, uh, yes, or yeah. how easy it is to shoot them by accident. But the pump action shotguns apparently yeah. are a little easier for for aiming. Uh. So I thought for my <laughs> husband. It's also, it's also like <laughs> Natasha's 
four foot eleven, <laughs> like ninety eight pounds. A pump action shotgun. I told her, I go, that would blow you into yeah. the next room if you were trying to stop an intruder. Well, yeah. Apparently, the thing that stops them is the the sound. <laughs> Why not just get a sound effect? Get an app on your phone that goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, we should make the that. Pump action the app. The pump action app. That's pump a app. Really good pump idea. Pump action shotgun. I have something like that. <laughs> were you looking the, at it for protection? Yes, of course. Oh, you want a gun? It was yeah, well, like, it was, you know, like everyone's. Uh, Prepper shopping. Virus and, time. Right. It was it was viral. That's viral also panic. a side. That's I one see, of those I things see. where when you don't have kids, like we we don't have jack fucking no, shit in our house. Like anything. we have we nothing. Have food. Right. We don't yeah. have anything. And like yeah. we like, don't even. Have, we're always just like it's crazy. We have nothing. And we're just like, like we don't wow, care. We're just like could we drink our pond? Here. Yeah. Like there, there's nothing. <laughs> there's drink. N- there's nothing there. Do you have a plan if things really go awry? What would you guys do? I'd probably go to our closest friends with kids' house because I would because you think they prep stuff. They're going to. You know what you're going to hear when you go to your closest friends with kids house <laughs> get the and fuck out like, of here and i'll be like that's just the app <laughs> that's uh, pump option no nope. so what, what do you do you have a plan though i mean are you, have you no about it? no the, the plan was literally was last weekend i said to my friend you need to help me get my shit together because i don't have anything yeah, yeah. We, have nothing. we have nothing we have we a have plan. we do have actually this same friend gave us like an earthquake survival box which They're is like in our garage <laughs> yes <laughs> but she gave it to us like five years ago so anything that's in there has certainly gone bad i and, and there's no like food in there. I yeah, I think they have bars. They got bars. We Maybe some bars. bars. Yeah, there's I bars. I like in you there. guys' style. You're just yeah. kind of like <laughs> yeah, we'll die. <laughs> Let us teens. We'll it's die. Really Why not? not? We have a whole plan. I've got a I've got an off road RV. Uh, we have water. We have food, and I have a cabin in the woods. You're gonna go off into the really? woods. Yeah, well, off I have the a, hills. You I have one. A pre-existing cabin. A pre-existing Where? cabin that my grandfather built oh, a long time ago. That you can ago. get to from Los Angeles. Yes, like I said, my mom. Con- my mom converted. Wow. So yeah, there you go. It exactly. wasn't the Jewish grandfather. No Jews have cabins. Yeah. <laughs> no Jews built cabins by hand. No. Uh, so that's wow. a, that's the plan. And you know wow. what? Listen. Nine hours by off-road vehicle. Yeah. It's like way, a little ATV? It's way no, it's it's like it's a motorhome. Better it's a than motor his plan home. of going to oh. Israel. Yeah, well, that's the other one, but that oh. isn't really. A yeah, great. they'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, <laughs> when the shit hits Definitely the fan, okay that's, that's where. Well, they so, say when the shit hits so the fan, be surrounded by enemies. Yeah, that's yeah what exactly. <laughs> go to a place the size of Central Park, surrounded by people who hate you. <laughs> Listen, you guys agreed to do the podcast, and we really appreciate that. Therefore, yeah, when shit goes down. And your uh, friends with You'll kids help us. reject us. Just if we're still there, if we haven't taken off already, yeah. we'll throw you in the motorhome. We'll drop you off somewhere, uh, somewhere in the in, in rural Northern California. We'd love great. to come. Okay, great. great. Well, we'll save your lives. Okay, Thank you. um, let's take some. You want to do a call? Okay, so that you guys know the drill. We get we yep. have live calls, people asking for relationship advice, and so let us let us take a call. That's great. Hey, Tosh. Yes, Mosh. Your butt is looking perky, and your third eye is looking open. What's going on? Well, I did start wearing Beta brand yoga pants. Oh, so it's the butt is the pant, and the third eye is the yoga. Well, I usually cover up my butt, but because they sent me these pants, I've been working out, and then I'll go like straight to an appointment or something. So you kind of see me a lot in these like stretch pants. Don't cover up that butt. That's half the reason I married you. Stylish, comfortable, professional attire. You shouldn't have to pick one. With Beta Brand, you never have to sacrifice comfort or function for style. Beta Brand's dress, pant, yoga pants are super comfy, perfectly stretchy, and they stay wrinkle-free. Right now, our listeners can get 20% off their first order when you go to betabrand.com slash honeymoon. You can go and choose from dozens of colors, patterns, cuts, styles like boot cut, straight leg, skinny, cropped, and more. They even have a pair with eight, yeah, that's right, eight pockets in case you got to put your weed somewhere. That's 20% off your first order at betabrand.com slash honeymoon. They also have premium denim with the same flexibility as yoga pants. So millions of men and women agree, just women, millions of women agree that these are the most comfortable pants you'll ever wear to work. Go to betabrand.com slash honeymoon for 20% off. Hey, Tosh. Yamosh. What size are your breasts? All of our listeners have been writing, and they have been asking, (laughs) what size are they? Do you know? Well, I actually took the perfect fit test for third love and found out I'm actually a half size. A a half size? Uh, Well, I mean, I'm a... Size a, and a half. A and a half. Thank goodness. <laughs> Third Love is a bra company that has this perfect fit promise, which is that you go to their website, you take this perfect fit, you order it, and if it's not the most perfectly fitting bra you've ever had, you have 60 days to wash it and wear it. If you don't love it, returns are free. 
Take the Fit Finder quiz. Answer a few simple questions to find your perfect fit in 60 seconds. It's actually fun. Takes less than a minute to complete. Like I said, they are promising that this is hands down the most comfortable bra you'll ever own. There's no labels, no itching. It won't slip. It's lightweight, super thin memory foam cups to mold to your shape. Third Love also donates all of their gently used return bras to women in need, supporting charities in the local San Francisco Bay Area and across America. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone, so right now they're offering our listeners 15% off their first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash honeymoon now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash honeymoon for 15% off today. Let's call Alyssa from Lakeland, Florida. Lakeland, Florida? That's you know? where Lauren's from. I'm We're, from Lakeland, Florida. We're oh, about to call. Po- maybe it's because you posted. Oh. Oh, you think so? What if it's somebody that you grew up with? It probably is. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sure you could help them. <laughs> well, this is going to be exciting. <laughs> Are you getting scared? I am getting a little scared. <laughs> it's so specific to have a caller from Lakeland, I know, Florida. Like, Wait, Lakeland, have you Florida. screened this person? Do they know her? They didn't, they didn't mention right, if they right, knew right, you, Lord. All right, all right, all right well, let's okay, find we out. We're going to call Alyssa, your cousin. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, exactly. My best friend. Hello? Hey, Alyssa. It's Natasha and Moshe and our friends, Lauren and Seth. How are you doing? Hi. I'm great. How are you guys doing? Well, we've got some serious questions for you before we get started. <laughs> um why okay great do, do you know lauren and is that why you're calling and are you stalking her in some way <laughs> are you somebody from her past um no i've i've never met her okay Could I know her? but i'm from lakeland are you from lakeland you know i i live in lakeland that's so crazy <laughs> i've actually heard that you're from lakeland but i didn't know if that was true or not. you chose to go to lakeland that's so crazy is lakeland not a good place it's in Central Florida. I, I okay. Like <laughs> do you like yeah, it, Alyssa? Central Florida. <laughs> I do like Lakeland. Out of all the places in Central Florida, I feel like Lakeland is like the one decent place. <laughs> okay. Well, lucky you live there. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> so, okay. Now that we've got that out of the way, uh, tell us why did you call? What is your conundrum? How can we help you? So, I have been dating a guy on and off for about six months now and it started very casual we were both just wanting things to stay casual and we just kind of got really close and we decided we didn't want it to be casual anymore but he also has a very big stance on not wanting to be in a committed relationship which is fine. I'm not a huge commitment person either. And we basically do everything that people in committed relationships do. Nobody's sleeping with anybody else. We talk to each other every single day. We see each other multiple times a week. I just met his sister not too long ago. Um, He even told me he loved me recently. So it's a great relationship and you're wondering why you want more. Well, I don't even really so much want more, but my friends and family seem to think that I am being the biggest idiot in the world, that this guy is just kind of stringing me along. Right. Sometimes I I feel like, are they right? Well, you know, to be fair, you moved to Lakeland, Florida, so there's some evidence that, yes, you might be the biggest city in the world. But I was born in Lakeland, Florida. Oh, sorry. Okay. 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 You can't help that. You can't help that. You can't help that. I mean, Lauren had the decency to leave. Got her out of there. Wait. So I'm I'm confused, I guess, and you guys chime in as, as you wish. No, what? with the commitment. Yeah, yeah what does he yeah, come up with? It, does he every once in a while just be like, "Yo, by the way, I'm not committed to you." Uh, <laughs> no, wait, but, I love like, you so oh, much. Yeah, you like, know that I love you, girl, yeah, but I am yeah, not committed yeah, to just, you. Yeah, and is it that your friends and family uh, oh, yeah. want some sort of big declaration from him? What or does he say that? Well, well, part of it too is that I am a single mom. I have two little girls. I heard they don't want um, commitment either. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> no, they hate commitment. We all do. Um, kind of what I teach them, but no, it, and he's great with them. And I really, in the past have not brought anybody around them. So this is kind of a new thing for all of us. But I mean, like you said, things seem to be going well. Like I'm happy. I'm okay with the way things are going, but 
you know, like even when he told me he loved me, he made sure to tell me he's like, "But I love all my friends." Ooh, oh, I don't like that. That's a big <laughs> asterisk. Wow, that's, that's, a... that's that's not yeah. good. Oh. Um, Wait, that's how he told you he loved. Friends. Love all my friends. Oh, oh, like I love God. sandwiches. Or like I love the sound of like oh, uh, the the tuba. You know, I love you. Believe me, I love yeah. the sound of the tuba. <laughs> That's yeah. so he right. is. And then right after that, he introduced me to his sister, who's like his the most important person in his life. So it's like sometimes I feel like I'm getting mixed signals, and I and I don't know if what I'm doing is the smartest thing because I am okay with it. Things things seem fine. I know I know that he's not looking to date anybody else. Wait, how long has like it been? That. Six six months. Six months. Mm. Almost six months. How yeah. how much time do you spend together? How often do you see him? Um, at least once a week, usually more. Natasha, no. I'm saying I don't think this is a relationship, really. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just feel like I don't think that this is something where he just. He, I feel like maybe your friends are seeing something that you're not seeing. Right. I mean, you feeling like you you you're getting mixed signals for a very specific reason. You are 100 percent getting, getting mixed, mixed signals. Yeah, getting it's signals. due yeah. to the mixture of <laughs> signals. Yeah, there's different signals that are coming in and they're kind of yeah. getting mixed up. <laughs> but so, that doesn't mean it can't grow yeah. into something. Yeah, because what I'm here, I'm trying to put myself in this guy's brain a little bit. He seems. I don't think he seems. It, just by your description, he doesn't seem like pure fuck boy. He seems like a a a, a fuck boy that wants to become a fuck man and he's kind of toggling back and forth between you know this this thing where he is freaked out by the fact that he's falling for you and you have two kids and he doesn't know if he's ready to i mean i can relate to that idea like being scared to be someone's stepdad so if you say to the person with i love you and i'm committed to you you're kind of also saying ergo i'm i'm going to be the father to these the secondary father to these children I can see that fear. So he, it feels like he's kind of swinging back and forth. He goes like, I, I love you. But actually, you know, I also love the tuba. You, you know, like, like it's kind of like, the, you, are you guys getting that too? Totally. I, I think that, well, here's the thing. Do you want more from him? Right now, no. Um, the thing is, uh, the only reason I've stuck around through all this is because we do talk a lot. Like we actually communicate really, really well when one of us is upset about something or unsure about something, like we talk it out. Do and you, so we have talked about why he doesn't want to be committed. And what does he say? A lot of it is some of it, some of it does have to do with, you know, the whole stepdad thing. And, you know, he doesn't feel like maybe he's totally ready for that, even though he does feel like being around them and everything. And just also part of it is kind of wanting to be, free to have his free time i guess he feels like if we were in a more serious committed relationship he couldn't just you know spend the weekend in his underwear playing video games <laughs> instead yeah. of doing something with us which i'm not that kind of person i really don't care but you there's do gonna do and i'll do what i want to do there's gonna come a time where you are gonna want more from him because you are that's just who you are you're a mother of two kids and you can't really have just this boy who like you see every 10 days who like it wants to play video games and like be immature and just have the fun parts you know like you're gonna get sick of that well he sounds like a cool surfer and I think you should cut him a little bit of slack <laughs> yeah I mean, let, you relate yeah I relate to this guy let him go to the beach man just let him, let him be I, I think I and guys cut jump in yeah but I think for me this guy is like I said he's toggling back and forth between what he wants and uh, like how he feels for you and and then this tether to his to his freedom and his youth we were just talking about that actually Alyssa uh, and the good news for me is like you guys are six months in so you can set your own timeline you can yeah. say to yourself like oh this is awesome I'm feeling this deep connection but I'm getting these mixed signals and therefore I'm gonna give this thing I'm gonna give this thing six more months and if in a year he's still t telling me the same things and still and not wanting to commit in a way that could help your life yeah. and make it a little easier and better because it must be very hard being a single mother of two kids what do you guys think yeah I think if you don't I think your family's probably projecting what they feel your needs should be on right. to you and if you 
are enjoying having this dude who is probably literally telling you exactly what he feels yeah. <laughs> in that he is afraid of committing because <laughs> he doesn't want to have kids and he wants his own free time and uh, and you're okay with that, then that's fine, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that six months is really not that long in the span of... No way. I wouldn't talk to Lauren's kids for three years. <laughs> he still doesn't speak to them. I still don't speak to them. Oh, so oh, <laughs> yeah. there are kids in the family. Yes, I just, I refuse Neither of you see to, them anymore. I, I don't acknowledge them as... Oh, they live at your house. Yes, oh, exactly. amazing. That's in, amazing. In the basement. <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> They're chained up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, six months is not that long for bringing someone into your life and the life of your children, which is such a big deal. Good point. And so as long as you are not requiring more of him. And he, rightly so, is not diving in to something that he should be taking seriously. Yeah. If he was... It'd be weird willing. if he was like, let's hang out with your kids. Exactly. Like, oh, bigger red flag. I'm here, it's been 48 yeah. hours. Yeah, Call exactly. me dad. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, that would be that would be scarier and, and, and a much, much more dangerous situation. So so uh, to me, in my, in my opinion, if you're okay with things taking a long time, uh, t- taking their time and sort of feeling it out, then then just do that and don't don't question it. Don't listen to what other people think you should have. Agree. Uh, just take your time. I agree. And I was I just realized I was just thinking about it. Like you're feeling maybe there are mis- mixed signals or people in your life are feeling like maybe there are mixed signals. He's probably also receiving mixed signals from himself. He doesn't yeah. know what this is yet. And just like you said, Lauren, like six months is time to still have mixture of signals and you're going to, it's all going to become clear. And the the red flag really would be if you weren't enjoying the relationship, but since you are, sounds like he's dicking you down, right? All this is important. (laughs) I say, yeah, figure, give yourself a timeline. Every 10 days. (laughs) So he has a lot of time to recuperate and plan a new strategy. Yeah, that's right. right, right. He goes to clear water for a few days to clear his mind. (laughs) Well, good luck, and I hope you both grow and uh, it gets better. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it is yeah, good, no, but you, I Alex. hope that it gets even better. Yeah, yeah. And, I and, hope you see him three times a week soon. And, exactly. and, yeah. and you're not going to be in a relationship. <laughs> there's no world in which you're in a relationship five years from now, and he's still saying the same thing, and you are and you didn't notice that somehow you got like fooled into staying with somebody for 10 years who's still like, I got to go be with my boys down in Tampa. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll figure it all out. Which is an hour away. Right. Is that right? No. I did. I, I picked the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good luck. Good luck, Alyssa. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank go Dreadnoughts. You. <laughs> the dreadnoughts. That's my I school. I like that. It's a battleship. Whoa. Dreadnoughts. Yeah, is, that's yeah. a pretty. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Mm-hmm. We were. What, what was your town? Uh, we, oh, we were the E Rabs. The E-rabs? what? What? That's just a it racist. Like, is what? that a funny way of what saying Arabs? Like <laughs> East High School. That's how you order Arabs online. <laughs> it was East, East High School. <laughs> no, it's the, it's the, it's a do away with with Islamophobia. You go to erabs.com. You get to know an Arab family. Eventually, you're like, oh, you guys are just great people. I, I love the, I love the Arab. East, red, and black. Those are the colors. Oh, East, red, and black. What about you? What? Uh, Point Grey was my high school. Greyhounds, we were the Greyhounds. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. We were, I think, the Bull, Bull, Oakland Tech Bulldogs. Mm. That's what we were. That's I think the dread, Dreadnoughts kind of win in the day. Know, it's, that is it's really kind cool. of a cool. It's, it's pretty cool bad. Mascot. Are they pirates? It's it, No, it's, it's it's a battleship. Oh. Yeah, and so we, like, well, I mean, I wasn't. I was a cheerleader in high school. Okay. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. <laughs> no, would you have? Was that sarcasm? No, I wouldn't. Really oh, no, I wouldn't either. Know, That's wild. You don't have um, really the, no, the demeanor. The, the pep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're full of cynicism. <laughs> you seem depressed, I guess. Yeah, well. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you were, che- were you, like, really popular? No, no, not really. Po- I, I wasn't unpopular, but, you know. That sounds like a popular I mean, person. I mean, you're gorgeous, <laughs> so it's like... Uh, but... This in Florida was a real nightmare. Oh, brown hair. Yeah. <laughs> Jew- Jewish, hair. Jew hair. <laughs> Jewish hair. Jewish hair. Jewish, big Jewish hair in Florida was a real nightmare back then. What about you, Seth? Were you popular in high school? What were you What were you like? Um, No. I was like, uh, you know, I was somewhere. I was kind of would go. I was like a pothead. Right. You know? Right, so, like, right. if you wanted to smoke weed, then people would come hang out with yeah, me. Yeah, the potheads yeah. were always. So, we they, they were beyond, it's called beyond popular. Exactly. Like we're yeah. over here. Yeah, <laughs> we, we're doing our own thing. We called them the Stonies. The, the Stonies. Stonies. <laughs> Stonies. We were called uh, Skids was kind of a nickname the, the that we had. The Skids. That's interesting. Which is a derogatory. No, nah, but it's kind of cool. You want that. I have this memory in middle school, right when I started smoking weed, 
where I drew like a weed leaf on my on oh, my, yeah. my binder. For sure. And, and this black girl looked at my thing and she goes like, she looked at my binder and she goes, this white boy crazy. <laughs> and, it, and I felt like doing 50 backflips. Yeah. I was just like, he is crazy. He is crazy. You've noticed. You know. <laughs> it was such a happy moment. Drug weed leaf on my shit. <laughs> well, I feel sorry for that girl. Cause. Do you really? I don't. She seemed like it just seems so hard to date with two kids. Oh, oh that's yeah. hard. That's hard. Yeah. And then you see him once a week, and he's just kind of like. Her dilemma mm-hmm. is probably always that she doesn't ever want to be like, "Come on, what's up?" Because yeah, anybody no, been, right. two kids. Yeah, that's no, she a, seemed cool. I just think like, yeah. yeah, yeah, it must be hard to meet another partner once you have kids. I could yeah. never. It's very challenging. I could no, never. Could, could so you? Hard. Could you? Could you imagine yourselves finding someone? Let's say you guys didn't find each other. Yeah, and they have two children. You're like. Yeah, I'll join. I'll sign up. In a way, that's like there is some of the guesswork is taken out because you if get you to like meet the them. Kid, if you like them. the kids, yeah. if you were someone who wanted to have kids and you like the kids, you'd be like two good kids. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. And like then maybe you know you're not going to have shitty kids. I didn't. I, I, I didn't clean one diaper. Yeah. What's I, that? I would have been down with that. Would you really? Yeah. What about three? If they were cool and we had resources, <laughs> <Would've>, <laughs> <laughs> three kids, three three kids, rich dad, you would have been there. <laughs> cool yeah, kids, been rich okay. dad, uh, I'm in. Okay, great. Actually, that's the sitcom, and that's what yeah. we wanted to pitch. Cool kids, cool rich, kids dad. rich dad, <laughs> and in, uh, in, yeah, great. Okay, now we thought, well, let's do some secrets. We, we have a secrets hotline. Ooh. People call in, they leave us their deep, dark secrets, and we'll just play them, and then we can yeah. riff on them. We okay. can talk about them. Okay. I like this. I we have want to five. Know people's deep, dark secrets. Wow, we have five. Is let's that a good it. amount of secrets? Yeah, that's a healthy. You're good. But you know what's interesting? Hold on, before you play it. What's interesting is we set this podcast in motion and tweeted out the, you know, that we have the secrets hotline. We've essentially done no follow-up. Yeah. And it's just always full. The voicemails are always full because, uh, as I suspected, everybody has something that they've never told. Some of them are very dark. Some of them are very innocent. Yeah. But everybody's got something, and they're like, wow, there's a receptacle. For I can to- finally do this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That could you dump- just unlocked how Catholicism functions, I think, <laughs> yeah, basically. Right. From, from what I understand, yeah. It was, well, the confession was so weird. Right. Yeah, I can imagine. Because it was Did always like, that? Yeah, but I would just like make something up. It seems like the weirdest shit. That is like, there's some things, like I get like Jews literally dress like fucking wizards, but there's some (laughs) things that to Jews that non-Jews do that seems so like mystical and fucking. Like kneeling. Yeah, well the the confession is something. Well, first of all, my first time in a church and I saw there's like a thing for you to kneel on. I was like, whoa, (laughs) that's fucking crazy. Like what foresight? It also seemed like cheating because I thought like if you're kneeling, just kneel. Let it hurt. Yeah, make it hurt. (laughs) Exactly. Well, we went to the Vatican. The booths are crazy. Well, when we went to the Vatican, there were she there were areas that the, I couldn't go that she could. Whoa! There was like, and you couldn't go there anymore. Really? I don't think that makes me think we both couldn't go to certain areas no, when right. we were in the not. Vatican. They no. don't even because, tell us about because those. you're Catholic. Yeah. Whoa. This was like only this is for actual Catholics. This is for tourists. That's crazy. Oh, wow. I was yeah. wondering why they gave us those yellow stars when we came into the Vatican. <laughs> but they said it was fine. That seems really <laughs> yeah, unusual. I would have heard about that. I feel like par for the course. <laughs> Uh, I kind of think, though, that there is, if you take out all the sin part, the sin part's weird. Yes. But if you take out that, there is something kind of cool about About the, conf- the confession thing, I think. Yeah, you talk about, you, like, you don't have that secrets. That guy doesn't know anything. No. He doesn't have any advice. Right. We just gave that girl, like, so much information. Like, yeah. They, it's not like they helped you with your problems. But, and also, they, like, fucked the kids. Yeah. Well, that's right. bad. And that's like, not right. good. Well, you guys all agree? Wait, do we all agree that that's, <laughs> that, that, that way, seems they bad? They probably should have yeah. yeah, let's go on bad. record. The Catholic, we're recording this. They should have bad. They should have podcasts. I mean, I have to work out that. That is true. If they had had a Catholicism podcast, probably <laughs> it solved so many problems. You're not within touching distance. I know. I no one ever had a personality. It was just always mean. Right. Right. Was that like, is an it was issue. Like stern and mean. So why would you want to tell them your problems? I see. You right. know what I mean? Like right. it was just like I, I thought bad about my mom. Mm. Flea bag really then, glamorized. Then what, the and movie. then what would they say? Yeah, they're all like hot. Yeah. Not like okay, thank you, or say a right. prayer. You know, uh, like was it, was it always like, prescriptive? Like just say a prayer. Okay, just it's like, Hail Marys. Yeah, right? just wrote right. hell, like three Hail Marys. I don't know. Right? Uh, maybe I'm. <laughs> Is there hilarious. anything you could say where they'd be like, whoa? 
<laughs> that's fucking crazy. That's, that's fucked so, up. That's you know up. that's bad when you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. like, damn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. This white boy crazy. <laughs> that's what you're trying to get the priest to say. <laughs> At all times. <laughs> Why you Father, come on, come on Father the other side of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, there, there, there is something, though, that I think it's not about the wisdom of the person you're confessing your secret to, but the fact that you don't have a secret anymore. That you've, you, the, you, like, AA has that idea right. that, like, you, you, you confess all of the, the, the wrongdoings you've done, and then you have this great, for, even if it's bullshit and it's symbolic, like Yom yeah. Kippur. Right. To me, I do Yom Kippur every year, and I know it's very unlikely that there's a man in the sky that's like, well, you're off the ledger, you're good. But I, <laughs> right. the idea that once a year I kind of like go in and symbolically cleanse myself, I yeah. kind of walk out feeling a little lighter. Yeah, an atonement, I think, an acknowledgement that you're, you know, that your shit stinks, yeah. I think is good yeah. uh, in general yeah. for some people. Let's yeah. hear some people whose shit stinks. Yeah. That'd be great if that was literally the first. <laughs> secret. I, my secret is my, I think my shit smells worse than average. My shit is worse than normal shit. Um, hi there, I'm calling because I am really stinky <laughs> Extra stinky shit. <laughs> We're like, that's just shit. It all smells How bad. do you know? It's mine's pretty bad. <laughs> Extra bad. All right, let's play one. Hey, Natasha and Moshe. This is a secret um, that I've never told anyone. Um, <clears throat> when I moved into my own place after college, I was really strapped for cash. And I joined an escort service. I met up with probably four men until I got really creeped out and stopped. Um, one of them made me dress up like a nun. Um, there you have it. most of them just wanted to fuck and then talk about their sad lives. <laughs> um, yeah, I never really know if I should tell this to the people I'm dating or not. So far I haven't. Um, but yeah, that's my secret. Bye. I love oh. that she had, she set out the four men she'd been with. She was like, there was the guy that made me dress as a nun. Yeah. And then there were some fucked up people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there were people with problems. <laughs> <laughs> the rest were bad. The rest had <laughs> deep emotional problems. That guy was that? I, wow. That's wow. a good one. Yeah, that's that a, good, that's a real secret. Yeah, totally. It's a legit Definitely secret. Definitely don't tell the men. Do no. not yeah, tell why? people that. Why well, tell? They don't deserve no. to. It's, not, it's yeah. not their business. Unless you no. want to. No. Y- I yeah, I don't no. think it's like yeah. a thing you must confess. Not no. at all. And the no. thing is, if you had like a rich family, you wouldn't have had to do that. Yeah. Right. Is, you think so? What if she wanted to just like She didn't empower? though. She did it because she, she was need, strapped she for cash. Money. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're she right. She said strapped. Yeah. 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 I like though. I like that that was a secret that many people would have called in with a great deal of shame in their voice. And I didn't hear that in her, no, which I thought didn't. was cool. Yeah. No, she genuinely yeah. just seemed to want to know if it was okay for her not to tell the people that she's dating. <laughs> yeah. so, and I'd say, yeah, don't tell them. From our family to yours. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't tell. But him. actually, fucking people—that's pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I would feel very unsafe. I don't yes. know. I mean, that seems really scary. Yeah, yeah. Right. and none one broke the camel's back. <laughs> that would be no, creepy. No, yeah. if it had all if it had been all nuns, she would still be in the business yeah, today. Then they got creepy. <laughs> so that guy wanted to fuck a nun. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Mm. Do you and get that, that in some <laughs> as a Catholic? <laughs> well, they're never attractive, or no. at least the ones right. that I grew up yeah. around. I remember one like grabbing my chin, and they would like tell me to change my clothes. Like they were just always like mean or kind of rapping at you. You know, right. like they're just kind of like <laughs> I picture them wearing the, like the big heavy dresses or whatever. Do you think you wa- that's what she was wearing? And I know. Did she bring a nun? When I wonder if when it was organized, he was like, "Bring a nun thing." Yeah, he must have had it. (laughs) Bring a habit. Bring a habit. (laughs) She's got a habit. He's got. (laughs) I think that he has a habit. He has a habit, and it shows up with a habit. I also think that he would probably have been disappointed if she had showed up in a sexy nun outfit. Yeah. No, 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 no. I want like a real. I want the flying. I want the flying nun. The kind of classic. I want it looking like you're on the cover of a Danish. Whenever I see a nun in the wild, it is like an exciting. It's like a real spotting. Like I remember. And we were, I remember being in Rome and they're yeah, everywhere. Like it's they're like, everywhere. Oh, it's yeah. like, like none fucking central. Yeah, like, it, there's like, it this is, is the hub. It's, it's the, I, I, it was so exciting. I was like, oh, they're were real. You they're on everywhere. It all? Not, uh, yeah, the whole time I was like, I'd love to pay a prostitute to do this. <laughs> As a Jewish male, there's exactly. something particular about this thing that I want. Not I, at all. And then not, I bought a nun. Uh, exactly. Nun Lauren's been dressing like a nun. Ever do you since. think that it is also, it is, I'm going to ask a question that's obvious. It's, it's also that they are asexual that makes them more hot 
to people's Maybe. fetish mind, right? It must be. But then why do they wear those garter belt things underneath there? <laughs> <laughs> how do you know what nuns are just, wearing that's underneath that's there? You're, you're right. <laughs> In every Bon Jovi video, that's what I'm right. just saying, like, I don't think anybody's, like, hot for a rabbi. Because no. They're, no. They're, not, they're out, they're married, and they're doing their thing. But no. the fact that it's, like, deep no. forbidden fruit. Well, the real thing is that women don't, like, desire that, as I think, as much no. as men. But even, right. I bet in the Jewish... Like Jew, I, there's no like wig porn. Like I don't know. I doubt there's like among in the Jewish community like long skirt wig porn. Have like, you ever? I've never you looked up know. long skirt know. wig. Honestly, yeah. I tell you what I'm doing right when I get out of here is googling long skirt wig porn. Listen, I've, but, <laughs> I've never done that, but I have looked up Jewish. Yes, and it exists, but they're all just like hot Jew, Israeli Israeli girls. women. Yeah, exactly. And but, I don't think I've ever told him. You guys want to hear? I don't think I should tell you guys this, but should I tell you? That means you should. I have looked up. This is bad. <laughs> I don't know up, if I want to know. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. Like Just it's, say it. I've looked up deaf porn. Deaf, deaf porn. porn. Deaf. D E A F. Oh. But yeah. what's bad about that is the only deaf people that I know are my family. Oh. So, but there's. That's, but I know the language. I don't know. I never dated a deaf it. girl, but there's something <laughs> fucked up about. I shouldn't uh, probably. Oh, you're attracted to that, but it's I, no, family. I didn't say I'm attracted to it. I've looked up many things. You're just curious to. about it. What's yeah. out there? By the way, it's out there. What are they doing? It's out there. They're are, signing. Are they signing while? Yeah, oh, it's happening. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Did it turn you on? Is the real question. Let's do another secret. <laughs> is it you? Uh, hey, I jerk off to deaf porn all the time, <laughs> even though my family's my only deaf <laughs> counterpart. <laughs> all right. So about two years ago, my wife was going on her bachelorette trip. Uh -oh. And so I was left home alone. Oh, no. I was left, left like a list of chores to do. I get the chores done. So now it's my time. Oh, God. What I chose to do with my time is drop two hits of acid and watch Star Wars The Last Jedi. Well, this is yes. half an hour to an hour-ish to get the movie going so it'll be kicked in so I can really enjoy it to its full potential. I'm about 12 minutes into the movie. Like, lights are going. It's being amazing. And then I'm getting phone calls and knocks on my door. It's my in-laws <gasps> and they're bringing someone over to look at our roof oh, no. and I am freaking out. <laughs> I'm like, call my wife, like, your parents are... <laughs> yeah, I know, the roofer guys come here. I'm like, oh, okay. So I let them in. Uh, I let them in and so I'm just trying to keep my cool, control the volume of my voice. <laughs> the roofer guy is uh, really eccentric. He's like waving his hands around talking about all this other stuff. Uh, my in-laws are also... Uh, uh, immigrants from the Philippines they speak broken English and so after like the roof guy left they're they trying to talk to me and I'm just like playing it off like oh I'm just I'm just tired <laughs> guys and then they're trying to talk to me about planning a, like a surprise party for my my now wife and I'm just like not with it at all I'm like oh I gotta I gotta talk to her about that like, no no you can't talk to her about that but anyway, played it off cool. Um, I probably deserve an Oscar for it. And yeah, that's my secret. Thank you. Bye. Oh, this that's a rules. good that secret. Amazing. I love that guy. What a great guy. <laughs> that was Wait, so secret from oh i guess from his wife Does i guess he, or know? the or the parents uh, yeah but or maybe also, just something he wanted to confess maybe by. he I, never I, told her but i love that he had chores oh that he had and then he did them very yeah. and then he did he the chores and then he's like and the what do you do when you're done mopping <laughs> up you do and two hits of acid and watching the last jedi alone it's such a cool idea what a guy he's just like this is gonna be the best weekend ever. He sounds like one of your friends. He really does sound like one of my friends. <laughs> it's also awesome. He's like, I'm gonna have a bachelor party all by myself. Yeah, he said, like, it's gonna rule. <laughs> Me and the Jedi Order. Yes. <laughs> well, good for that guy. I like the, also that he thought he deserved an Oscar for his acting, but they said, let's plan a surprise party. He's like, well, I gotta I'm talk gonna to her. Gotta her first. Yeah, <laughs> kept it together. Oh man, that guy yeah. sounds cool. Good for you, bro. I Every, love that guy. Yeah, I love. Him yeah, too. I wish he had invited him. us over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we'll, we'll watch that. that. We would have done that. Had, yeah, he deserved to do that. Oh. Yeah. yeah, good but story. Maybe, good story. I, I do think it's important to tell people when people are coming to do work in the house. For yeah. sure. Well, that's yeah. the thing. It was, it was the it, his in laws. It was their bad. Sure. Like not his. Yeah. Yeah. So that was. And he was so funny, to his credit, that we were laughing over the part where he did the accent. 
Uh, <laughs> it was in there, oh. and we were laughing, and luckily we didn't have to hear him thank do the God. Filipino oh, broken English. Okay, okay. So the one thing that would have made us really so turn on him, we weren't even we able to hear. I, sub- I subconsciously <laughs> guffawed over it. I like this guy too much yeah, to hear I, him I go do there. That sometimes <laughs> I can feel rhythmically where this is going. <laughs> I'll laugh now. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's play another. Hi, this isn't a oh. scandalous secret, but something I'm dying to get off my chest, Thank which you. is I've been divorced from my first husband for four years now. And I never said this to anyone out loud, but I never close. liked his art. And I <laughs> hate his music and all of his bands sucked. And I hated every second of hearing it and going to shows. That felt great. Thanks, guys. Great show. Oh my God. <laughs> that was she's great. like got a cigarette. I know. I think you're like, like draped do you think over. She's like she's from the bathtub. She was <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. You know yeah. Exactly. Hello there, Just darling. That oh, was a glamorous lady. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> that was. Oh. I hated his art. <laughs> the most damning thing. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Buffett, rotten hell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that lady was awesome. I pictured I her like Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like uh, like an old like Kath. Uh, what what was her name? Uh, the lady with the raspy voice, uh, Kathleen, Kathleen Turner. Turner. Oh, like yeah. Yeah. Kathleen yeah. Turner oh yeah, character. Totally. Yeah. Oh man, that, oh, that was, was great. Really but what a fun and and, and relatable. She we've hated all, his art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've all been in a relationship with someone. See, like, I couldn't be with someone if I hated their art. No, yeah. especially no. if it was music. I yeah. mean, there is no oh. way I'm going oh, to some God. bad music show all the time oh. and then hearing them practice. Oh. Uh, and, and then having like, to act like it's good. Oh, uh, that was great. That's an issue when you date somebody in the arts or whatever, and the first time they're going to show it to you, you're like, uh, and you're like, oh fuck, yeah, thank you, thank God that wasn't bad. You don't even need them to be good. It just needs to not be bad. Oh yeah, that I think we relate to them. Yes, for sure. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's play another one. Hi guys, love your podcast. Um, I have a mini secret. So I am a recruiter for basically a scam, and we have to meet goals every single day um, as to how many people we have booked and how many people are on the schedule. So some days, um, most days, when I'm feeling lazy and don't really want to contribute to ruining people's lives, I will make fake resumes and put them on the schedule. Um make fake phone numbers, fake emails, and I'm, I've quit recently. So now I'm just stealing all of the nice office supplies, <laughs> fine pointed Sharpies, and beautiful pilot pens until I have left the company. Thank you, guys. Keep up the great podcast, and I love you both. Wow. Bye. Doing the Lord's work. That's wow. great. Yeah. I love these people. I've been in a situation where I was in a, a, I had a job where I was forced to do something unethical and just refused to do it. I used to be a sign language interpreter, uh, the deaf thing. So I would like jerk off to the clients, obviously, because I would look <laughs> them up. You look them up. Obviously. Yeah, but they, yep. they, I would do phone calls for deaf people, and the Nigerian prince scams. The way those scams all work is they start at at regular people then we all figure it out then it plunks down 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 until they get to the more vulnerable populations the elderly the immigrants and the disabled and i was making phone calls for deaf people uh that's i was interpreting over webcams making phone calls for them and the way that the the fcc ruled it was that you had to interpret every call faithfully you had to give them the opportunity to be robbed like a like anybody like else. A regular person <laughs> and so that came down from on high like oh we just have to interpret these things and i was like i am not oh, gonna fucking God. do that so then i would every time one that's w- insane it was crazy and every time a nigerian it was clearly a nigerian scam call i would i would i wouldn't say you're being robbed i would just say I can't understand him, and I don't think he's telling you the truth. And I would hang up the phone call, but I could have gotten fired for that. Wow. But this woman, that's different. She's like, she's Rob. It, she's, the Nigerian she's, yeah, she's the Nigerian <laughs> prince. She's like going against her company that is also unethical. That's right. That's yeah. what it sounds so, like. Oh, I see. So she doesn't feel bad she about like it. She like works for Herbalife no. or something right. and yes. decided, oh, I'll just fill since out they're fake. doing a pyramid. So that's an interesting question. Since they're doing one, is it okay that she's kind of ripping them off? Yes. Yeah. I'd, I'd say, say yes. You guys say yeah? yeah? I yeah. think 100% okay. Although yeah. I know these people, I'm sure you have people like this in your life who are like, I... 
I'm down to shoplift from a corporate. I'm down to steal from a corporation because who is really get suffering? And I kind of get the logic behind that, but then it's like then you're still a shoplifter, so you still have to deal with that. But as they should. But if they yeah. don't, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> but office supplies. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. Who no, doesn't yeah. steal no, office supplies? I'm in, I'm in. I've stolen no, so but, many office supplies. But that's not her own. But she's also Currently, like right? making yeah. up fake <laughs> stuff myself. so she doesn't have to work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which I also a, kind of. I'm in. I, I'm in. Well, All these people need to get together. This Kathleen Turner lady, acid guy, <laughs> and this wild thief need to get together Hello and have a crazy Could you pass a ballpoint pen? Listen, I'm going to burst in for the surprise party. At that point, I'm going to be waving my hands around my hands will my fingers will be 14 inches long you're gonna not believe it and i want you to grab all these office supplies and run we have one more secret one more secret good evening Moshe and natasha my deep dark secret is that six months ago quite by accident while planning a family vacation using our shared family desktop computer i discovered incontrovertible graphic evidence that my wife was having an extramarital dalliance with a colleague. Whoa. In my upset, I gathered texts, images, dalliance. voicemails, Google location data, I see why. and other digital information, and secreted it away in case I needed it. I confronted my wife with what I knew, and after several long, hard conversations about our 19 years' worth of relationship, Whoa. we agreed to reconcile. For a few months after that, I managed to not snoop into any of her electronic data. However, one night, my anxiety overtook me, and I discovered that her lover was not taking well the news that she was breaking up with him, and he was continuing to pester her to continue the relationship. So I used the information I had, packaged it up, prepared to send it to his wife and his employer, and I contacted him. And I let him know in a very nice way that I admired and respected the life he had built with his family and the life he had built professionally. And I let him know that those lives would stay intact so long as he broke up with my wife permanently and left her alone. I didn't go into what the consequences would be should he fail to do that, but the truth was pretty obvious. It has now been three months since I did that. And the good news is he has stayed broken up with her and has given us the space to renew our relationship. That's my secret. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. I've never applauded before. That was amazing. That Goosebumps. is fucked up. That That's a true crazy. crime podcast waiting wow. to happen. We thought that acid guy was a good storyteller. That guy, <laughs> I got it scared. It like he wrote it. He typed he it was out. Reading, it yes. sounded like he typed right. it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. his affect at first, I thought the secret was going to be like, I secreted it away as well as her body yeah. and yeah, her exactly. lover's body. Was, and I'm only, living in their skin. <laughs> yeah. Almost sounded like a manifesto. <laughs> I, 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 I was like, what are we about to hear now? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Exactly. That's pr- Honestly, usually a story that fucked up doesn't end with a happy ending. But in a weird way, that felt I like I guess it. it is. I don't yeah. like that he told he was saying that he was going to kill the family. He didn't say that. What did he you want? I thought he no. said he everything saw... you hold dear. <laughs> no, he I seemed he was, like he a man that would kill a family. <laughs> yes. He was alluding a, to a threat. Yeah, he was alluding to. He was, he he was like, gonna, I'll he destroy wasn't your family. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to send them okay. all the information yeah. that you've yeah. been fucking my At wife. At one and point, I was life. like, I wish he wasn't a fan of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on this guy's side. Okay, yeah, he was a little robotic and weird, but yes. I do think he he got he 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 found something terrible out. He talked to his wife. He was they, forgiving ultimately. He, he yeah. forgave her. They decided to stay together. Then homeboy just couldn't stop coming back for that good good. He used the word. He used the word dalliance. 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 Yeah. Yes. He said dalliance. Dalliance. That's Man. No, that's not nothing. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, I speak for all of us when I say that white boy crazy. Yeah. That white boy was the craziest <laughs> yeah, white boy. That, that is a crazy. <laughs> that's a crazy that white boy crazy. right there. That's a crazy story. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so interesting. Interesting. I always find it fascinating when someone's partner is unfaithful and they blame the. Other the person that they're being on Facebook. I agree That's completely. Such a good point. Like, I agree so, completely because so, like, you didn't. Like, why get, is it this guy's fault? Right, like, you didn't get betrayed by. Yeah, like this guy owes you nothing. But in this situation, it's a little different. He did blame his wife. Decided to stay with her, and the guy wouldn't stop. She said to him, "Yeah, it's leave over. Me alone. Yeah. I want yes. my life back." And, and he was he like, "Just let me get one more taste." It's true. I honestly think if that guy's like 
uh, presentation was different, I, I'd be like, oh, yeah, this guy's a normal, forgiving man who deserves uh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing but the best. But it was packaged in yes. a slightly... Uh, Nosferatu tone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if I opened up the computer and saw that you were fucking one of my friends, oh my. I would... Definitely oh, not. Colleague, 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 colleague. Yes. Yeah, I just don't think that you'd be out. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't know that I would be out for you. I mean, I guess that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> just keep that in your back pocket. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would, I would, I would like, certainly file all the information and secret it away. Yeah, yeah. I would secret it no, away. And all should see. the time come, I would destroy the life of the person you were having this affair with. No, Moshe just thinks it's one step closer to a three-way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like cracking my knuckles like, yeah, perfect. Exactly, yeah. Start with the guy, work your way over to lateral, just uh, kind of whatever it takes, you know? Can't make an omelet without... <laughs> yeah, this is the unfortunate road bump on, yeah, the, exactly. on the path to the threesome. We'll get there. <laughs> I, listen, I would have preferred it not be a colleague, yeah. but, uh, but I couldn't do it. Uh, well, okay, do you guys have time for one more call? Yeah, that okay? we'll do one last call and then oh, we'll, yeah. we'll call it a night. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know, my dad used to be a United States postal worker. Oh, my aunt is one. Things have changed, though, because now people are selling stuff online. And getting their orders out can be a real pain in the butt. How do you keep track of who gets what? What shipping carrier should you use? USPS, UPS, what do you do? Are you getting the best rates? That is why you need ShipStation.com. ShipStation helps you get orders out quickly, save money on shipping costs, and keep your customers happy. And you don't have to use the thousand Scooby-Doo stamps that your aunt sent you. That's right. No matter what you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, your own website, ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface, making it super easy to manage from any device, even from your cell phone. ShipStation works with all the major carriers, including USPS, FedEx, UPS, even Amazon Fulfillment, so you can compare and choose the best shipping solution for you and your customer. So right now, Endless Honeymoon listeners can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you enter the offer code HONEYMOON. There's no risk. You can start a free trial without even entering your credit card information. Just visit ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in HONEYMOON. That's ShipStation.com. Enter code HONEYMOON. ShipStation.com makes ship happen. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh? You've been a little bit listless lately, a little bit tired. It seemed to me for a while that you had a serious chronic fatigue issue. But then I started crushing up Ritual, which is a brand new women's vitamin, and putting it in your soup without you knowing it, and you are perkier. No, I love the Ritual vitamins. Yeah, I didn't really do that. She's been taking them voluntarily. <laughs> ritual left out all the mystery additives, synthetic fillers, and shady extras that can be found in some traditional multivitamins. They have obsessively researched each nutrient in their visionary women's multivitamin. It's carefully choosing forms that are absorbable by the body, and they've tested their formula. Science-backed isn't just a buzzword for them. It is the standard. And I have noticed, like, when I take vitamins, I do have more energy. Ritual is making obsessively researched and clinically backed a new normal. So, listen, we would like you to try Ritual. And therefore, we're offering our listeners 10% off their first three months at Ritual. Uh, daily changes can lead to big results, so start small today. Ritual is offering our listeners, again, 10% off your first three months. Satisfaction is guaranteed. You just go to ritual.com slash honeymoon. Start your ritual today. They'll send you this multivitamin. You start taking it. If you don't feel better, you don't have to pay for it. You can return it. Satisfaction guaranteed. 10% off your first three months at ritual.com slash honeymoon. Okay, we're going to call Mia in New York City. Okay. She's up late. Hello? Mia? This is her. Wait, is it? <laughs> this is she. Okay. Is she. Oh, Mia? Yes. Okay, hi, yes. Mia. <laughs> it's Natasha Leggero and Moshe Kasher, and we have our friends Lauren Miller and Seth Rogen. Hello. Hello. Oh, my God. Gosh, hi, it's a Jewish dream team. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we've been describing yeah, ourselves all night. Yeah. Yeah. Are you wearing a nun habit that. by any chance? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> uh, for later. Okay, great. <laughs> Mia, what's happening? Why'd you, why'd you contact us beyond just getting in okay. touch with the Jewish dream team? <laughs> <laughs> So um, two years ago, I started corresponding with a inmate in Kentucky 
And um, we became very close. We're um, really good friends and um, we're attracted to each other. And I am afraid that if I continue talking to him in the manner that I am currently, that I'm going to completely ruin my chances of meeting anybody in New York. Um, but at the same time, New York also sucks to, to date in and his personality <laughs> is so refreshing. Sure. So it's, it's just, uh, hey, Mia, what did he do? I, I, what did he do? Yeah, what did he do? Sorry, what did he do? <laughs> yeah, what did he Let's do? Start there. Big, big. So he's in for, he, he's in for burglary. It's a, it's Ooh. a non-violent. Okay. Non-violent burglary. burglary. How, what's his sentence? Non-violent. So he, got seven years and so uh i've been talking to him for like two years and he has two more years left so he's been in for like five years okay how how did you meet him so i was um doing casting for a reality show called love after lockup and part of the outreach for that process involved uh just contacting me and mates directly so i uh found this website called hotprisonpals.com Oh, and sure. Wait, 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 wait. Let me stop you. Hold you on. You fell in you. <laughs> this is this is amazing. We you fell in love after lockup. Yeah. <laughs> you are the reality yeah. show. I I fell I fell in the trap. You did it to you did it. You're you did it. Yeah, you didn't <laughs> fall in the trap. You yeah. ra- you go, where's a trap nearby? And ran toward it and leapt in. So he's pretty That'd be high. like if the cameraman yeah. from cops started robbing someone all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, why did you choose this guy? Was he physically hot, or what was it about him? That Is it that you- sexy guy okay, who so- I keep seeing oh, shots yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> prison Bay? No, yeah. it's not Prison Bay. Oh, no. But I was uh, I was scanning through HotPrisonPals.com, and something about his profile just like stood out to me. I thought he was very cute, so I uh, approached him about about the show, and I was like, "Are you seeing anybody right now?" And he said he wasn't. He's like, no, I'm in uh, fucking prison. <laughs> I've been for five years. He's like, well, I don't see time. anybody. Oh, I no. am in prison. Well, I am seeing about 50 roommates right yeah, now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but a lot of people, uh, you know, would say like, oh, yeah, I'm seeing this person. And then, you know, you'd contact them and they'd get on the show. Like, it was like, you know, people admitted when they were in relationships. Mm. And I'm not saying that's like why I trust him, but... Uh, I I do trust him, and uh, I know it sounds crazy that. Have you, you met know, him somebody, in real life? Like, I have not. Oh. I uh, I don't. I also like. I'm not delusional. Like I know. Like I won't be able to commit to a relationship with him until I meet him in person. Like I I need I need to know he can be on his own for a while before I can commit to anything. But it's just so nice talking to him in, in the meantime and um, just dating in New York. I cannot stress this enough. Like, just sucks so much. Well, I didn't so know it having, sucked that it, much. It, it just seems like it sucks much harder than I had pictured. Yeah. Because, like, when I think of a bad dating scenario, what I would fear potentially is dating a guy and finding out he was, for a example, a burglar or a criminal or someone with been to prison uh, or was uh, maybe even worse, currently in prison. Uh, so, it's like you don't even yeah. have to wonder if there are red flags. He's like, yeah. I live in a red flag. I live in a red flag. Building. I actually got caught stealing a red flag. <laughs> Honestly, I'm more freaked out by the idea that the guy lives in Kentucky than th- that he's a burglar. I mean, give me a New York burglar any day of the week. I, I have a question. Have you guys had any conversations about his burglary career? And is it something that he has yeah. remorse for? And is he like, you know, I, I've yeah. totally changed? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's a long story. So he was uh, a former uh, former heroin addict, and that's oh, what. Oh, okay. Him no, stay with him. We think you should stay with yeah. him. He's good. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, like, he's so like he like now now he's so great, and his personality is just so refreshing. And um, I do really you, do like. Do you talk on the phone, or do you? Like, yeah, chat? we. So we started through this um, email service called JPay. That like it's like his email service and then we started talking on the phone and that was two years ago and uh i like i know it sounds so crazy but i really do trust him and like i I, i'm not like i don't want to get into a full-fledged relationship with him but i do like really enjoy his friendship and it's distracting i feel like because i have him at the end of the day i always have him and I always yeah right. You know, you know exactly where he is at all times. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> to be but to be fair, you don't have him. The state of Kentucky has yeah. him. 
<laughs> hey, uh, it sounds like you're pretty sprung on him, though. I mean, yeah. hearing you talk about him, you get you very do, animated. You seem yeah. to like him. Are you? Are you? I actively... just want to, I, I want you guys to know that I'm not like delusional. Like I've thought a lot about it, and okay. like I like I trust him, and like right. people like, that are delusional yeah. usually don't think a lot about things. They they kind of yeah. yeah. Are they you understand. dating still in New York? Are you like getting out there and meeting so, people? Dating in New York sucks so much. What? No, you Can I say yeah. what? What sucks? I mean, yes, I'm, I'm, I am not, I am not, I am not single. But every time I'm in New York, I'm just like, <laughs> if I was, I imagine this would Seems be a pretty like a easy great, place to meet people. <laughs> <great dating laughs> it's, it's, it's a, there's <laughs> motherfuckers <laughs> everywhere. Like, like you can't, you we can't live spit. above a bar in yeah, New York. It's and just it like, is just like hot single people. Yeah, it's door. like, it's have you like, been? Downtown. Have you been, <laughs> yeah. no, have you been downstairs? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't get what. No. Like, I, I don't. I truly don't see. Like, they go to there. Like, there's still bookstores in New York. There's like, it's one of the few cities there are places to, to go, out. go out and meet people and talk to people and stuff like that. Uh, no, and I, I really have been trying to put myself out there and, and go to like events and, and go to like these you know fun places in New York, but everybody. Just it really it everybody is standoffish and and me myself included like you go to a bar and it's like the bartender standoffish the patron is standoffish their dog is standoffish you know and, like <laughs> I, our dog is standoffish our dog so, is yeah. very <laughs> do you know where people are also kind of famously standoffish in prison prison yeah <laughs> <laughs> not known for their warmth and welcoming spirit yeah but I do think Lauren has a point it's like it, it, you kind of know that this is to take Seth's word a dalliance that's mine now okay, I'll take no, it no that's that, well that's what that, the last guy yeah. said <laughs> you know and, and so it's like if, if this is making you kind of fantasize and keeping you inside and not going out and kind of canceling plans and staying in and masturbating to his prison pictures yeah. or whatever the you know it's like that's maybe yeah. not that healthy for you if you are Does, really trying to meet someone it yeah. doesn't sound yeah. healthy to anyone here I would no. Right. Right. Yeah. No. I. I look. I think it's really hard to connect with people, and if you find someone you connect with, like that, that means something, and that that's important. However, there is practical yeah. life to be lived, and you know it, right. this situation is uh, extreme. And I think that you know that in two years he's not going to be available for two years. Right. And then is that- two years after that, for him to get two his years. shit together and prove to you he's not on heroin exactly. right, or a burglar. Exactly. So and, that's two, like- and two more years for him to get his green card to move to New York. I, right. From Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky. It takes a while. Yeah. Yeah. It does take a while. You have to be allowed <laughs> in. From yeah, that's all right. Vaccinated. You have to, you have to go to Ellis <laughs> Island. Yeah. And- yeah. Yeah. Get a new six last year. name. There's a, there's a rom-com about that. The six-year romance. The six-year oh. plan. And yeah. Well, don't pitch your movie, but there is literally a reality show yeah. about it called <laughs> Love After Lockup that you work for. You work for. So uh, there must be an appeal to dating a man in prison. Don't it must there like yes. it, it can't be like you're not alone. There's a whole fucking show. There must be something women see a man in prison and are like there's something I like about that. Well, I don't want a question. I have a please. question. Have you had yeah. a lot of relationships? No. So I've never been in a serious relationship before and I've been talking to him for like two years and that's the closest I've ever come mm. to even, you know, being in a serious relationship before. Um, and yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want a serious relationship? I do. Um, I don't know if, if he's the one per se, but like I, <sighs> I definitely don't want to would... write off. <laughs> Find a nice guy and frame him. him. Yeah, no, yeah. he's not the one per se. Yeah. He's the one o six nine dash four. I um, I, I I want. I'm really tempted to just keep making jokes, but yeah, I, I, you seem to get that it's not ideal. You right. work for a show about it. If you called, if you called us and said, "I have a man in Kentucky who's free." We would and still say, "Don't do that's it." That's right. I would. I would yeah. be like, "Well, long distance relationships are often ways to have intimacy without actually having intimacy, and usually they're just a fantasy to keep you from actually doing the hard, nasty work of being in a relationship, which, which is difficult and takes a lot of self reflection and stuff like that." If that was a free man, 
But the fact that he's in prison and the fact that he's got this, I'm not saying, I, I definitely believe in the redemptive power of, of pe- people redeem themselves. Yes. I, I went to rehab when I was a kid and I, I, I get it. Drug addicts aren't always drug addicts. Criminals aren't always criminals. But this doesn't necessarily seem like real intimacy to he's me. He's just hot and he's probably photogenic. Do you guys have yeah. sex, by the way? Like um, yeah, we, letter sex? Yeah, we, so we have phone sex and like, we're definitely like super attracted to each other. Like, yeah. uh, you know, that's the thing is like, you know, it's so nice to be able to like rely on him at the end of the day. Like, I know he's always going to call me consistently and like no one else that I meet met even comes close to stacking up to that. Right. And how see, often, yeah. how often do you go on dates? Like, are you on the apps? So I'm not on the apps. I, I really hate I get the on apps, those apps. I, yeah. yeah. And any app will do really. <laughs> <laughs> Because here's the thing you have to remember. Here's the thing. You what's your name again? Mia. Mia. Here's what you have to remember. He, you are so much bigger in his mind probably than he is even in your mind because he is in a prison cell. Right. And like he probably is. It's going to be really hard to break it off with him because I'm sure he's like you know very into this. Um, Yeah. And so I don't know. I just think like you might just need to like cut it off. She's not going to do that. I don't. Right. You're not going to do that. Right. (laughs) But I, well, no, I, I don't want to. I, the reason I don't want to cut it off completely is because I he really doesn't have a lot of other people to talk to. Like he, you know, he has his mom and that, and like that's not your problem. Yeah. He's like a guy who lives in Kentucky who you just met from your yeah. job. Yeah, and, and you the, can't, you can't, you can't not live your life because you're afraid of of hurting his life because that's that's not on you and 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 you haven't you haven't earned that. He hasn't earned that from you yet. Not only that, but that's but that's yeah. not romance. Romance isn't I have to be in my partner's life because they don't have anybody else. Even if that was the person yeah. that you were with in real life, that's not what romance is. Romance is about yeah. sharing and back and forth, and it's about getting get, true intimacy. And I, I'm sure this guy's a good guy. I'm not saying that he's not a good guy, but I just like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, listening to you, you seem really cool. You're obviously talented. You deserve more than this you deserve more than a person that is literally not just unavailable he is not free yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. he, he's not yeah. available for city life he, yeah. he, much less a relationship you deserve real intimacy because it's taking you away from meeting other people for sure yeah if you were like i'm dating and then i go and we, i phone sex my right. prison guy that'd be totally <laughs> fine i would say honestly right. like yeah. if you it's pretty if, hot actually. yeah exactly <laughs> something uh, hot yeah. about it yeah, yeah. Totally i think that, that, they like, would actually totally be pretty like fucking it's cool totally yeah it's cool. like i fuck uh, free men i <laughs> fuck <laughs> imprisoned men I, I i do it all like i think that would that yeah that maybe that's something to strive to work towards is uh yeah i, 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 I think uh yeah there's nothing wrong with that is but if it's stopping you if you're not going out on dates and join right, the apps. That's the problem. I think, yeah, that's you know, exactly the problem. And if he in any way is making you feel like you shouldn't be doing that in lieu of. No. Yeah. Well, good. Well, no, that's <laughs> the thing is like we've talked extensively about the po- the possibility of like being in a relationship together. And he is, you know, we're both very much understanding that like that's not yeah. reasonable at this point. And we, we would have to wait, you know, for him to be free yeah. for at least like two years or so. So, you know, dating yeah, no, app, were, were, were dating apps around before he went into prison? He knows what you could be he doing. Ju- he just got this very last, like, the, I think the night he got arrested, he went on a Tinder date. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why With a fucking narc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, I have a question. How does the guy jerk off uh, in prison? Like, do, do they quietly. Is it like in a quietly, room? Quietly. Great question. What's great that? question. So, a great so question. that's a great question because he has a special. Um, there's a, a special stall like behind the saloon doors that he. They have a this saloon? is what he explains. Kentucky, 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 Kentucky prison. prison. <laughs> there's these saloon yeah. doors, and he puts like the trash can lid up against the saloon doors so that nobody can get in. And he can jerk That's off. That's how he's explained it to me. So that, and it's kind of like a code, like don't come in here. I'm, I'm, oh, it's like the scrunchie know, on the, the door. Spot. Right, it's, it's the sock mm-hmm. on yeah, the wall. Exactly. When you put it like that, this is romantic. Yeah, this is just intimacy. Kidding. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. I judged the trash you. can is up against the saloon door. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, May. Who knows? Listen, we don't know. It's possible that this is your that, that this is your soulmate, and it's you guys. Absolutely it's not possible. It no. Seems- if he asks for frozen meat with a <laughs> saw blade inside of it, then just don't do that. <laughs> we don't. We don't know. But she we, needs to call it off so she can meet someone else. This feels yeah. like Red Flag City. It yeah. feels like you could do better. You, or you- go to Kentucky, steal some shit. See if you guys get placed up uh, near you one another. The, wor- the worst yeah. advice ever. Exactly. She goes to Kentucky. She robs a bank. She gets put in prison. Only She's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're not together? Yeah. You don't have co-ed yeah, prison? On, on second thought. That's why, I, that's why this would be a bad rom com. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, man. May, May, May. What Mia. are you going to do? Mia. Mia. Oh, whatever. Mia. It is. I'm distracted by other details. <laughs> Oh, Mia, get yourself out there because he cannot. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> Do what oh, he can. That's good. Before we yeah. say goodbye, because I know, I know, Mia, that you, you know, you maybe you're a little lonely. I want to give you a gift and just, can I t- try to turn you on real quick? Would you mind? <laughs> oh, no. just he, really, yeah, or do you have really like quick. a single friend? Or no, something? I'm gonna just try to turn you on right now. Hold on. Okay. You ha- All right, I'm ready. You have a collect call from an inmate. <laughs> in the- <laughs> <laughs> this call is being recorded by the Kentucky State Federal Penitentiary. <laughs> oh man! Listen. All right. Well, good luck. This Mia. has been a delight, but we truly next time. Thank next you. time we talk to you, you better have broken up with this guy. Yeah. Will you yeah. keep in touch with us, please, and tell there's, tell us about your dating you life? You can't like you can't like gradually cut it down. You have to just like cold turkey get rid of him yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. will you seriously will you keep in that's, touch with us in the future we'd like to uh, know what, what, what happens with this yeah and that's kind of what i was like you know expecting to hear was like you know it's, it's got to be cold turkey or, or bust so yeah yeah I, well uh, busting is what he's doing behind yeah. the saloon doors but <laughs> yeah you know already what we were going to say before you called you know the answer it just takes courage to get out there and 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 take a swing because it's scary to be with not with someone but it's a little scarier to be with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay good luck good mia. luck mia yeah. thank you thank you guys so much thank Love you. you boots was here yeah. <laughs> I mean, God, you know, none of us have perfect relationships. But, uh, that's looking pr- pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Okay, we are doing okay. We are doing all... fine. I'm starting to think she wasn't Jewish, also. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Oh, man. <laughs> I was in the middle of that call. I was a little nervous because we were hating a little too hard. I'm like, this motherfucker's going to get out. Someday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who's a motherfucker that told her to break up with me? You think they have access to podcasts? <laughs> I don't do. know. I don't the know. The podcast release program. You have to Kentucky, put a garbage can up against some saloon exactly. doors to listen. <laughs> to listen to it. You put oh an iPhone God. in the garbage can so the whole prison can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm glad we got... I did want to know how he was jerking off. Yeah, that was a yeah. really good day. question. No, and I pictured glad. him like just in a row of phones, and they're all just standing there, just Jerk doing it off. Each other. Yeah, it's just doing yeah. their thing. They said that in the um, ISIS training camps, no, the Al Qaeda training camp, that there was a jerk off booth. That Whoa! The, that the, the foot soldiers would go go away and go jerk off. So I guess it's yeah. a universal need. Oh yeah. man, it's rough right. out there. I'm. Yeah. It's that good. made me feel so happy to have a good relationship. Good to not be yeah. single, huh? Good, yeah, exactly. I know. I know. We, we go in our some... jerk off room together. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> well, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank what you for having us. us. What a pleasure. This is so fun. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I think maybe we helped some people. I think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. And we'll talk to you, listeners, next time. Bye.